In this video, I'm going to replace this 3000 watt 12 pound inverter with this 6000 watt 80 pound inverter. So here we go. I recently picked up this Ames inverter and it is heavy at 80 pounds. It's 6,000 watts and 48 volt uh, DC input. It has the split phase output, so it'll do uh, 120 and 240 at the same time. And I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm gonna give a, a really brief history of how I got this, then we're gonna take the cover off, we're gonna look at some of the electronics inside and compare them side by side with some of the other lightweight inverters that I have already. We'll see some of the things that are different. Then we'll put it back together. We're gonna make a couple of heavy wires. I picked up this uh, four gauge cable for this project. And uh, then we'll actually power up some things and including, uh, we're gonna power up that miter saw of mine and see if it blows the inverter like it did the other one or if this inverter can handle a miter saw. So let's get to it. I originally was not planning on buying an Ames inverter. Uh, nothing against the company. I've, I've heard plenty of good things about these inverters, but I was saving up my money for a high efficiency inverter. There are four brands that kind of stand out to me. The Outback, Magnum, Schneider, and Victron all make inverters that are 93 to 95% efficient. This inverter is 88% efficient. So I lose some of that. Uh, which is why I was saving up for one of those high-end ones. And I came across this uh, bargain, and so I picked it up. Uh, now, I think these units are something like uh, 1400 and then it also has the optional uh, remote display, which is another, I don't know, 150 or something like that. I picked up the total package for 900 Now, it's all new equipment, uh, but it was an open box item. Apparently it did not fit in the, uh, some, somebody bought it, it didn't fit in their application. They were trying to squeeze it into a portable application and it didn't fit so they returned it and I picked it up. Uh, now let's take the cover off and look at some of this stuff. Here's the package. It's roughly two feet long and eight inches square on the end. So eight inches tall and eight inches wide. Uh, it's uh, got a metal cover to it. Uh, this side over here is clearly heavier, so I'm guessing we're going to see a big transformer over here, and over here I'm guessing more electronics. Here's the back end, so we're going to have the positive and negative posts, uh, remote posts, uh, generator hookup, grounding lug, dip switches, yeah, so a couple different things there. has a rotary switch for different charging parameters. I'm not going to be using this for a charger. Uh, Ames actually says that the only lithium battery this can work with is lithium iron phosphate. And I have the Chevy Volt batteries, which I think are lithium manganese cobalt, something like that. It's a different chemistry. So Ames does not uh, recommend using this as a charger, but that's also okay because this charger won't go all the way down to 50 volts. Uh, 50.2 I think is what I would need for the 12 cells in series. In my application, this is just an inverter, not a charger. If we check out the heavy end, <laughs> and so these are just alternating current circuit breakers, they are not DC. And then we have this ground to neutral connection, which in my application needs to stay separate. there's a little circuit board on this cover and it's connected so I got to pull that connection off. There we are. Good. All right we got it off. Let's take a look in here. So here's our big transformer with the iron core 
And then over here we have the circuit board. Uh, this is the piece that I was trying to take off from underneath. Uh, there's still a ribbon connection, a uh, ribbon cable on there that I'm not going to take off. And then here's the different uh, pieces. And I don't know what all these things are, but <laughs> I'm sure you guys do. Uh, so it looks like we have a big heat sink here. And then are these more MOSFETs? Uh, they are tiny. Hmm. Some more tiny MOSFETs over here. Looks like we have a, a temperature sensor. And then, what is that? So this, uh, this, there's a big cable coming. Look at that. There's a big cable here. The red cable goes to this aluminum heat sink. And then this black cable goes over here to this heat sink. And then those cables come up to the transformer. So the heat sinks carry some current. Uh, the 48 volts DC comes in and attaches directly to this big heat sink. Uh, so the heat sink itself is carrying some of the current. And then over here, the negative post, the fan that's over there in the back sucks air in past all these uh, fins. So that's cool. And it looks like there's another fan over on this side for the transformer. And somewhere there's going to be a center tap. Maybe that's this wire, which would give us the 120. And these come over. Uh, so we've got our circuit breakers. 40 amp circuit breaker. So here's a grounding post that also comes over and attaches to this uh, wire, which could be go going to a ground. And it also taps off and comes over here, following over to something. Uh, these two wires could be tied together, but that's if this is um, in a portable vehicle. Uh, so a trailer, a van, setup, something like that. And this then makes your one and only neutral to ground connection. Got your AC input, which I'm not going to use uh, because I'm not going to use this as a charger. And then our AC output, and we have hot one and hot two. That's going to be 120 volts on each, or you can combine them for 240, which is all basic North American electricity and your neutral. So all in all, looks great. If you haven't seen my other videos, this is an 8,000 watt inverter, but this design I think is called a high frequency inverter. This design is called a low frequency inverter. And this one uh, uses a uh, little bit different items. And, uh, you know, I couldn't tell you what all these things are, guys. You know, it's not my thing, <laughs> electronics. But if you're into this type of thing, then you can visually see the difference. Uh, this is the Reliable Electric brand, uh, and this is Ames brand. Low frequency to high frequency. I hope that helps some of you guys out. All right, let's throw the cover back on and not forget this little plug when we do that. I'm not sure how I feel about the inverter in this location, so I might be moving it down the road. A uh, couple of things about it. It sticks out beyond the face of the cabinet, but also I'm not sure how much uh, heat this is going to throw off. This is 4 aught copper cable, and I have to put the lugs on. I found the bandsaw cuts this well enough. There we go. Now I'm using this big hydraulic crimper and I found that the dies listed as 95 are the right size. So I don't, uh, I didn't actually need them going way up here. 
Uh, I'm not sure what the numbers correspond to, but if you're um, if you're looking at different uh, hydraulic crimpers and you see one that goes up to die 95, uh, that might be all you need for the 4 aught cable. Well, we have a few cables here to hook up. So this is going to be my main positive cable. Looks like I could have gone with a slightly smaller hole for the lugs. I want to check these dip switches and make sure they're in the correct position uh, before I do anything else back here. So right here are the dip switches. The frequency selector switch 4 and I want 60 hertz so that's position 1 for switch 4 which it's in and then I want battery priority not AC priority. I don't think that matters though because I'm not hooking an input up, an alternating current input up. So it looks like these switches are all in a good position. Alright over here I'm just running this LCD remote and then I have the excess cable up here on the back of the remote support so I can hook that wire up there okay so we have our little display this is for our negative now I checked um, I checked the manual. I didn't see a torque spec. It might be in there. I just didn't find it. Now we can go back over here and keep working. Um, Way back in the box here, it says for the 250 amp breaker, down at the very bottom, it says 220 inch pounds. So that's 18 foot pounds, which seems like a lot, but okay. 19, 18 foot pounds. There we go. Good. So that one did it. There, finally, okay, 18 inch pounds, or 18 foot pounds, which is gonna supply the power to it, and I'm gonna connect this cable up to the bus bar. There we go, good. Over here we have the negative wire that's coming around, and it looks like I have a little bit extra and I'm just going to loop this around and down and it's going to be tough to see but I'm going to bolt it in the back there. Alright, so with these switches in their middle position we should be able to actually turn the breaker on. So let's go ahead and turn this on. <laughs> I can hear the hum. Power on, inverter mode, output voltage 231. Now let's see if I can turn it on with the display. If I turn this off and then turn the display to inverter on. Yep, so it does work. Uh, so I don't need to use that switch. I can use that one. But it looks like I can also switch it here if I want to use this just as a display. Well, let's plug some things in and see if it works. Let's, uh, let's start with an LED light. Yep. LED light works. So let's try these heaters and see if they work.
<laughs> so it actually kicked on uh, the fan inside the inverter. And yep, this is uh, pumping out the heat. Let's try this bandsaw. That one works too. Let's see if this works. It did it! <laughs> yes! Well, that's great news. The inverter works. It turned on the miter saw. Nothing blew up. Oh, man, I, I'm just... This is awesome! Tell you what, we can throw the, uh, the cover on this. Well, I'm thrilled. That means I can do... Oh! Before, I was about... I almost forgot. Let's try the air compressor. Okay, where did I put that? <laughs> the compressor switch is on, but there's 100 PSI in the tank, so it did not automatically kick on the compressor yet. So we're gonna relieve some of the air, and when it automatically trips, I hope this inverter can handle it. Here we go. From zero load, can it start an air compressor? So all of my tools will be able to run with this inverter. That, oh man. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you guys uh, like the videos. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and share the videos. That really helps a lot.